Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to part four of this Gyro Flow series. Uh, Gyro Flow put out an all new version 1.0.0, and this software is great. It's so much easier to use than their previous version. So, in part one, we talked about using Gyro Flow as a replacement to Real Steady Go for your GoPro footage. In part two, we talked about stabilizing your DVR footage using your flight controller. And in part three, we talked about stabilizing footage that had already been stabilized in camera with HyperSmooth. So today we're going to talk about using GyroFlow to stabilize your Insta360 Go 2 footage. Um, yeah, you can do this in the studio, but we want to see if there's uh, any advantage to doing it through GyroFlow. Okay, so what is GyroFlow? It's an advanced open source gyro assisted video stabilization for cinematography, drone video, and much more. GyroFlow has been around since 2020, but the all new version is so much easier to use and it's not fiddly. It's really awesome. Right out of the box, you install it, you can start using it right now. This software is packed with a ton of features. It has more features than Real Steady Go and it works with almost any camera and gyro combination. So you can use it with your cinema camera. You could use it with your GoPro. You can use it with a run cam. You can use it with your Sony camera. You can use it with almost anything that has gyro data or you can add gyro data and match it with any camera. So, like I said, this is a multi-part video series. You're watching part number four. So we're gonna talk about, you know, why we might wanna use gyro flow to stabilize Insta360 Go 2 footage, um, as opposed to just the Insta360 Studio. You know, there's not a lot of options in the studio besides locking horizon. You can't really adjust the amount of stabilization that you add to it. So we're gonna see if there's any advantage to doing it this way. So let's dive right in. All right, so let's go ahead and bring in our Insta360 uh, Go 2 footage. Now I did shoot this in the pro video mode which is a square video format so we may need to make some adjustments here. Right off the bat I can tell it doesn't have the lens profile so we're gonna need to go ahead and search for the Go 2. This one says pro video mode so there's that. I can also tell that the video is sideways so we're gonna go ahead and rotate this. We'll go negative 90. There we go that straightened it up. Um, also here, the output video size, uh, you know, for this example, I'm just going to go 1920 by 1080. Okay, so there are a couple things we need to check, make sure the frame rate is good. Uh, we do have the correct lens profile and we do have motion data. This is the gyro data that is pulling from the camera itself. So that is good. We can do a low pass filter if we wanted to say anything above 50 hertz, we can just go ahead and cut it right off. Um, as far as the syncing, it should already be done because this was uh, already lined up with the file. Uh, field of view, you can kind of mess with this a little bit. You can see a safe zone as to where you may want to set it. Let's just go ahead and put the field of view at 1. Um, the smoothness, uh, like I said, there are different types of smoothness. You can see that through my other video uh, videos in this series. Uh, we can just try a plain 3D. Um, I like doing the velocity dampening per axis because you can say, okay, you know, only smooth this much. You know, maybe your yaw picture roll wasn't as um, abrasive. Um, you can also change this field of view to, you know, give you a more linear look or st stick with the wide look. So we'll just go ahead and kind of go with a wide look here. Um, you can adjust the look ahead of how far it looks ahead to make adjustments. Um, uh, you can also skim through and let's go ahead and set an input here that's where we're gonna start the flight and we're not gonna export this whole flight we're just gonna do like you know maybe a minute or something and let's go ahead and set an output there now let's go ahead and mute this and let's watch the playback so you can see that right there uh, we are getting some of the stabilization coming in on the sides so there's a couple different things we could do. We're set on static crop. We could set it to dynamic. Uh, we could also go to no cropping at all. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do dynamic for this one. Uh, so what we're probably going to need to do is just increase the field of view uh, and zoom in a little bit so we get rid of that. And that's more of a linear look, which is actually what I prefer. I do see there's a little bit more there on the side. So we can either adjust the smoothness a little bit, turn it down so it's um, not cropping as much, 
Uh, we can also play with this again, go to no cropping or go to static cropping. I guess we, uh, let's try no cropping. We'll just go ahead and continue to zoom in until we're in a safe zone. Now, you gotta remember this is a very, very wide, it's like 180 degrees, so there's a lot of room to zoom in. When you're using the Insta360 Go 2, uh, the Insta360 Studio, it zooms in quite a bit too. So um, you're not really losing that much here. So yeah, this is looking pretty good um, so far. You said I, I may zoom in a little more. I may just leave it because this is, of course, just an example here. We're just looking at what it looks like. One thing I have noticed that is different uh, between this and the Insta360 Studio is I can actually click and drag up and down and reframe uh, up and down. Um, so I'm not looking so much at the ceiling or down. I haven't figured out a way to do that here. If you guys know a way, go ahead and uh, leave a comment and let me know. But yeah, it does look pretty smooth. It's looking pretty good. Um, you can adjust the bit rate, uh, a few other things here just like you can in the studio. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just leave it like this and let's go ahead and export this. Now this software does take quite a bit longer to export than the Insta360 Go 2 Studio. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. This is an early release of this uh, latest GUI version, so you know maybe they're going to iron out some of those bugs. But you know it works, and uh, it does give you a lot more options than if you just export with the Studio. So this is what the final product ends up looking like. I think it looks pretty good. Um, you know why would you want to do this over the Studio? Well, like I said before, I think there's maybe some settings that you want to tweak or you want to maybe adjust to yaw stabilization more than a pitch. You don't want them to all be uniform. Well, you can't do that in the Insta360 Studio, but you can uh, with Gyro Flow. So you know, I think there's a time and a place for it. Obviously, you want to play with the settings to figure out what looks best for the type of flight that you did. And if you want to do wide or linear, you can change all of that in the studio, which is great. You get uh, a lot of flexibility. So. Once again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. My name is Lee from Adventure FPV. Uh, if you like the video, please hit a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.